Shalom. How do you view the present? Do you view the present as a present? Um, are you always looking towards the future and think like, oh, it's going to get better. And when I get older and when I this and when I that. And, um, you know, there's a passage in the Bible about saying kind of like Lord willing that we should say, you know, we shouldn't say we're going to go to Macedonia. You know, it's Lord willing we're going to go. Um, I said Macedonia because that's what I remember. I didn't look up that scripture, but it's talking about how we view our lives and how we orient our days and how we think of time. And um, I know that my whole life, I've always kind of have like these things I look forward to. Like I'm going to go do this on this day. And so I think about that a lot. Like my daughter, for instance, is going to go to this town on Friday. I'm going with her and she has been looking so forward to this. And we've talked so much about it that at finally one night I said, please, I cannot hear the word biz town again anymore. I'm, I'm so sick of hearing it. Just please don't say it anymore. And so then as I was walking out of her room that night, she goes, Biz town, just to, you know, <laughs> but she's excited. She's looking to this thing in the future, right? And I've been listening to this other sermon series and which is titled Here is Holy. And that's kind of their church um, phrase for the year of, of really embracing the here and the now and, and that that where you are now, here is where God wants you to be. You know, so the present <laughs> is a present. If you're alive and you're breathing and, you, you know, every day is a gift. Um, all, all these things are very true, but yet I don't always live my life that way. I, I, I love having something to look forward to. I love having the idea that the future is brighter and better and, um, you know, uh, you know, goal setting, all those things are not bad, but at the same time, you kind of ruin your present, your current state of here. And if you're always looking for the later, if, if you're always, um, you know, thinking it's better in the future, <laughs> uh, you know, like as kids, you're always like, oh, well, when I grow up, I'm going to make all my own decisions and I can have whatever I want for lunch. And then when you grow up, you're like, oh, wow. Life was a lot simpler, you know, when your only decision was between peanut butter and jelly and um, something else for lunch. You know what I mean? Like we always kind of idealize the future um, and not love the here and now, especially if the here and now stinks, especially if the here and now is hard. I have been going through a bit of a hard season lately and um, I've tried a lot of things to make it better. And oh, they didn't make it better. <laughs> and so I know what it's like to not love the here and now, to not, to not enjoy the present, to, to hope for better. Um, I do hope for better. I don't think there's anything wrong with hoping for better. Um, you know, the current situation in the world right now, I mean, countries are going to war. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of things to pray for and a lot of things to care about that, that are beyond me, that, that, you know, maybe don't necessarily affect me in my here to now, in my here and now. <laughs> um, but I care about and I, I want to pray that things change for, for people that um, are having a really hard time. And... The scripture verse, um, one of my daughters is memorizing and it's on my fridge because that's where they put their scripture verses to, to memorize. And uh, this one is, I think, of the New King James, which is not my favorite version of the Bible. Um, but so uh, the first line is, by faith, the harlot Rahab. Well, every time I see that, uh, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I don't like that Rahab is called the harlot. Um, uh, someone once, uh, I heard a great sermon about Rahab, and it was like, no one has ever chosen to be a prostitute. When you're a little girl, you don't go, well, when I grow up, I want to be a harlot. That That's not anyone's um, 
life choice. Usually that, that choice is, um, it's not a choice, really. Uh, Rahab didn't stay a harlot and God used her while she was a harlot. And they put it in the Bible to remind us that we've all been something at some point. Um, it, you know, it says that we were dead in our sin and that we're only made alive in Christ. And um, Rahab was a harlot. It, it, she was, and God used her. And she goes on to be um, in the, the lineage of Jesus. So God chose a harlot to be used as a great, great grandparent of Jesus. And so when, when Rahab was in that situation, right? When, when she was um, the harlot, uh, God used her. So no matter where you are in your journey, no matter where you are in your present day, wow, there is hope in your future, but there's there's hope in your here and now too. There's, there's, there's hope in this day, even if your country is being invaded and you're in a shelter or you're trying to get on a train. Um, God's love for you it never changes regardless of your present day, regardless of your circumstance, regardless where you are in your journey. He, he, he loves you. And he, he didn't tell Rahab like, hey girl, you need to get out of that life of prostitution before I can use you. Uh, no, he, he used her. He, he well, used her. She actually caused a victory. Well, here, let me read that whole verse. Okay. By faith, by faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jepheth, also of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Uh, they were able to capture a city because of Rahab. A city. Uh, Gideon was hiding out in a man of fear, and God said, Oh, mighty man of valor. And he was terrified and hiding at the time and didn't seem like a man of valor at all. Um, but God used all these people for great good. Out of weaknesses were made strong. So God uses us in our weaknesses and, and, I don't like feeling weak. I don't like not liking today. I don't like not enjoying my present. I, I, I want, I, I, I want, I want to, I want to see the present as a present. I, I want to learn how to embrace my weaknesses and, and be made strong through him. Um, I feel like this one's really pointless today. I thought about just stopping and walking away. But that's because I'm weak, right? It's all the more. I got to press on. So this is my other scripture verse that I pulled out. It's 2 Corinthians 7, 5. For when we came into Macedonia, this body of ours had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn. Conflicts on the outside, fears within, 
But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not only by his coming, but also by the comfort you had given him. He told us about your longing for me, your deep sorrow, your ardent concern for me, so that my joy was greater than ever. Um, God comforts the downcast and he, and he sends people. He sent Titus to them. And, and Titus was comforted by other people before he came. And, and so there's so much going on in the world. And there's so many people downcast and struggling who need the comfort of God. And, and he can use this no matter who and what and where. And if you're a Rahab or you're not, um, he can use this no matter what. And so let Lord open people's eyes to how they can be used and how, um, how to love every moment of every day you give us and, and, and help others to see the gifts that they are. Um, and that God loves them and, and help us to, uh, help us to really give comfort, true comfort and help us to lead others to you, the ultimate comforter Lord. So we just ask those, um, people that are that are really experiencing the the worst on, on this plane lord we just ask that you um that you find them and comfort them as only you can in whatever dire situations they're in right now and and then people like me that are should be happy help us to to find your comfort too lord just minister to everybody in your name we pray amen